After years of inquiries and reports, the government and a group of Indigenous leaders yesterday unveiled the proposed question for a constitutional alteration. Enshrining an Indigenous voice in Parliament and what it would mean in practice. And we will be going to a referendum later this year. After months of asking for detail, philosophical opponents of the voice still seem wholly unsatisfied. The political class is bitterly divided and it's going to be a rough few months ahead as this goes through a committee process. The beauty of this, though, is that these politicians and the parliament don't get to decide. You do. So let's go to the detail now. Joel Filk joins us live from Canberra. Joel, there's going to be months of debate ahead about this. There'll be a committee process. Uh, will the committee process change any of this? That is the key question. Um, but essentially, let's get to the nub of it. What will these constitutional amendments actually mean? Well, the referendum working group says that it believes it has struck the right balance with these changes to ensure that the voice body doesn't have veto power and won't hold up government. And they believe that the carefully chosen constitutional amendments guarantee that in the balance that we see between, on the one hand, the voice having the power to advise executive government, so the public service. And then on the other hand, while the second, the, the, the third paraphrasing of this little chapter says that Parliament will have the power to determine this body's constitution, uh, its powers and its functions, so that there is a balance in that regard. But there are concerns still about whether the vagueness of these statements could lead to high court challenges and indeed whether the public service could be bogged down by the magnitude of this task and heading into unknown territory. Let's take a listen to some of the perspectives today from both sides of the debate. Look, I think it's fatally flawed uh, because what it does is it retains uh, the full range of review of executive action. Uh, the voice can comment on everything from sort of submarines to parking tickets. Uh, and there's every reasonable proposition uh, that the courts will become involved uh, in adjudicating representations, whether they've been made, whether they've been listened to. So we will have regular judicial interventions. The wording of the question and the amendments are uh, going to make sure uh, that the parliament uh, and its processes are protected and that there is advice from First Nations people uh, on all issues that affect First Nations people. And all we're seeing now is already lawyers at 100 paces that we're going to see challenges and all types of things and when the government won't even release the Solicitor General's uh, recommendations and advice. Australians have got every right to be concerned about what they're being asked to sign up to. And if they don't feel comfortable, they've got every right, they've got every right to vote no. Well, it actually makes it very certain that this is not something that will be tied up in, tie up the government in the High Courts. Uh, this is a very safe set of words that has been worked on by the most eminent constitutional experts in the country. We've heard from former High Court justices. Um, I think this gives the green light for people to vote yes. The Prime Minister Anthony Albanese became emotional yesterday when he revealed the questions Australian the question Australians will ask be asked at the referendum and then those constitutional amendments. Now, what happens next is that these amendments need to be formalised in Parliament in a bill introduced next week, and the government hopes that bill will be passed come June. So there's really a three-month window of what could be intense debate as the opposition and Peter Dutton decides whether he intends to back this or not. So the stakes are certainly high here in Canberra for all sides. Laura? Joel, thank you.